I always think it's funny when I see just like depictions of school in general and the teachers and the students get up in the morning and it looks like 10 a.m. outside and the sun has just been out for hours and everyone's just so happy and casually getting ready for your work. As a high school teacher, especially in Maryland, I'm always frantically getting up at 5, 5.20 uh, to get ready and it's dark outside and it's, it's not beautiful and pleasant like in the movies. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been so long since I vlogged with you all. It's, so much has happened and I definitely have tried to vlog at least two times and something's happened in, in the middle of me vlogging and I've had to stop. Like yesterday I was vlogging my classroom and all of a sudden my battery died and when I switched my battery out something happened with my SD card and the, the rest of the footage got corrupted. So every time I've tried to sit down and vlog something has happened. A lot's been going on in my personal life. So basically the gist of what's been going on is my husband and I fostered a Siberian Husky, so like a third Siberian Husky, if you didn't already know from my previous videos. We have two, Finley and Zara, and they are about one year old and three months now, and we really weren't expecting to get a third Husky, at least not anytime soon. But with Hurricane Florence, we were contacted by a shelter that works in Maryland, Virginia, and then has a partner shelter in South Carolina. They contacted us because there's a mutual friend of ours who works for the shelter and she knows that we have taken very good care of our two huskies because we post them on Facebook and Instagram all the time. And so she reached out to them and said, I would get in contact with these people since you don't want to give a Siberian Husky that has a shelter history to just anybody because Siberians are, can be hard to raise in in of themselves but if you're talking about a shelter Siberian there's a lot more issues that come along with that so pretty much my life has been taken up with three different dogs and in fact I just woke up super early today to take them all three to daycare because it's it's completely worth it I know you're probably thinking why is this woman taking three Siberian Huskies to daycare or who takes their three dogs to daycare anyway. At this point with their energy level it's completely worth it to just kind of drop them off for the day and not worry about them being cooped up all day and they get to expel all their energy. So pretty much every other time I've tried to sit down and vlog something has happened in, in right in the middle of it. So I wanted to get you guys early today I still don't have a camera mount for my car so I kind of had to drive to work today and park and it's also getting really dark out in the morning. I'm not sure if there's any high school teachers out there but I'm really, I'm not sure if you can identify with me but I'm, I'm not looking forward to the mornings where I walk out of my door and it's completely dark and then when I get out of school around 3.30 or 4 I only have about two hours left of daylight so I'm kind of enjoying these last few minutes of or sorry not these last few minutes I'm enjoying these last few weeks maybe of light in the morning um, I always think it's funny when I see teacher vlogs or just like depictions of school in general and the teachers and the students get up in the morning and it looks like 10 a.m. outside and the sun has just been out for hours and everyone's just so happy and casually getting ready for your work. As a high school teacher, especially in Maryland, I'm always frantically getting up at 5, 5.20 uh, to get ready and it's dark outside and it's, it's not beautiful and pleasant like in the movies um, and I'm not like going to the gym or anything I'm just trying to get my dogs up and fed and get myself looking halfway decent for work and maybe making last minute lesson plans or making copies and so so yeah not everything's like the movies I guess or 
TV shows. I know that's a shocker to everyone, but yeah, that was a super big wake up call. I don't have time to do yoga or anything in the morning. So I will check back in with you guys later. I do have first period planning today. Maybe I'll get a chance to video, but probably not since today my co-teacher and I are doing cultural infusion into our kite runner lessons and they're doing a flip book. So I have to get that set up on my walls. I'll catch you guys later. I was able to catch up with you during my planning period. Uh, I did have to cover for a different class, so it, things have been a little bit chaotic and rushed today. So I did want to share with you what I've been working on. Today in my English 12 class we're doing cultural integration stations for the Kite Runner in preparation for really reading the book and analyzing it. So far my students have only covered about two chapters so far. And we've been using uh, a mixture of the graphic novel, the movie, and the text itself. So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover this flip book here. And this kind of gives an overview of the Afghani culture and history. So we have a cover page. We talk about trauma since there's that controversial scene in the book. The history and timeline. Afghan art the social structure of Afghanistan, like the caste system there and things like that. Kite flying slash kite fighting. And we're gonna give them an expectation activity where they share what they expect of the book and Afghanis Afghani culture. Then at the end of the activity, they're gonna reflect on how their cultural viewpoint has changed after the activity. So here, I'm just gonna show you all of my stations that I've set up. All of the desks are kind of congregated around each station and the students are going to move with a timer. Uh, two of the stations are teacher directed. One station, the teacher plays a video on kite flying and leads a discussion on the difference between kite flying in America and kite flying in Afghanistan. The other kind of more media infused piece or station is Students get to interact with a slideshow on the smart board where they use the AVID strategy optic to choose one of those art pieces from Afghanistan and analyze it with the acronym. So everything else is basically a gallery walk for students or they have to select an article to read and share out with the group. Each of my group labels is color coordinated with the flip book that way. Students don't get lost when they're writing down their answers and working with their groups. So this is my st first station, the history of Afghanistan. Students come up in their groups. So this is a uh, group that is focused on reading the different timelines. There's a cartoon timeline, uh, a shorter timeline of modern history, and an article that contextualizes the history of Afghanistan with the kite runner. This is the second activity. Uh, the second station is all about trauma and how it affects the brain, especially in students and children. This is the teacher directed activity on kite flying. The students will design their own kite to put into their flip book 
and they're also going to be reading a New York Times article on an Afghan boy who comes over to the United States and actually cut someone's kite thinking that America has kite fighting when really we actually just fly our kites. Over here is our fourth station. It's a yellow station. It's all about the social hierarchy in Afghanistan and the four different class systems uh, or the main class people groups, especially since the Hazara group in Kite Runner is so important. And then this is the final station. It is shaped in a U. This is art in Afghanistan where the students interact with the PowerPoint and choose an art piece to evaluate with optic. And we even have a little salon chair for the student who wants to click through the PowerPoint. All right guys, I will check back in with you later after we run this lesson and I'll kind of see how it went and catch my breath before second period starts. Hey guys, so I'm back. It is quite late after school. It is 5.22, which I don't usually stay this late but I had so much to get done today. Tomorrow we have the ACT testing for our juniors, which alters our bell schedule. And that's kind of throwing me off planning wise. So I had planned to do an escape room with my honors students tomorrow, and I'm still going, going to do that since their period for first period is gonna be extended to two hours. So a two hour long period for sophomores. So what do I decide to do? I decide to plan a last minute escape room and hopefully that'll go well. I definitely, I, I usually take a lot more time to plan an escape room. Usually I make them myself though and this time I'm going to be using, I think it's Novel ELA's Julius or, it's Novel ELA's Shakespeare escape room. So I have all of my escape room pieces in binders for all my students to access. In fact, I held it upside down. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. And that's the back. So this is kind of what it looks like. All the students work for the escape room in their groups is in a binder with page protectors. And this is from, yeah, this is from Nouvelle ELA. Uh, she's awesome on Teachers Pay Teachers. And I went out and printed her Shakespeare escape room or her breakout and put them in page protectors so that I can use them over and over again with my students. And also I can kind of share this with some of my other teachers, even though you're not really supposed to share things on Teachers Pay Teachers with others. Um, I'm only printing this once and I think I'm gonna let one teacher use my my actual print prep for it. Otherwise, I'm not sharing it on the digital or anything like that, so I don't feel too bad about sharing that resource. But usually, if I buy it, I'm the only person who should be using it because of copyright laws. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow. I am still feeling frazzled, it's still late. I'm supposed to get my nails done in a little bit. Hopefully, I can still do that. But I will catch you guys in my next video. Let me know in the comments below how escape rooms, what escape rooms you've tried in your classroom. Do you like them? Do you hate them? What are some tips and tricks for escape rooms? I've done quite a few of them, but I'd love to hear your experiences. Remember, learn often, teach well. I will see you in my next video.